Afghan presidential challenger Abdullah Abdullah has quit the election runoff. Hamid Karzai says he'll press on, but will his election be legitimate? And where does this leave democracy in Afghanistan? This is Inside Story. Hello there, welcome to the programme. I'm Shuli Ghosh. Hamid Karzai's main rival for the presidency has announced he's dropping out of next weekend's election runoff. Dr Abdullah Abdullah said he made the decision because the government hadn't met his demands for a fair vote. Dr Abdullah had wanted the sacking of Afghanistan's top election official after a UN-led investigation found widespread fraud in the first round of voting held on August the 20th. But the government had refused. Dr Abdullah's withdrawal leaves Hamid Karzai unchallenged in the second round of voting due to take place on November the 7th. Though analysts are questioning whether it should go ahead if the outcome is going to be obvious. Speaking exclusively to Al Jazeera, Dr Abdullah said he'd made his decision in the interests of his nation. It was uh, a, a decision uh, that I made it after thinking a lot and making a lot of consultations. Uh, and I think it was the right decision and I did it uh, for the interests of this country uh, and in the best interest of the country uh, into account. Uh, and uh, as far as the uh, process is concerned, hopefully, hopefully there is a way forward. I will be pursuing the agenda for change and reform in any capacity that I will be. And I think uh, they, perhaps uh, uh, after a sigh of relief, uh, I'll, I'll enter into playing this role with my followers, with my supporters, with the movement which has supported me throughout in the past five months uh, to see what can we do in the best interest of this country. Well, Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission has confirmed the second round vote will take place, even though Hamid Karzai will be the only candidate. It means Mr Karzai looks set to serve another term, despite questions over the legitimacy of the election. In a statement, Mr Karzai's office said it regretted Dr Abdullah's decision and added, in light of Afghanistan's constitution and for the sake of democracy and rule of law in Afghanistan, we remain committed and bound to respect the process and will accept any decisions by the Independent Election Commission and other legal institutions. Well, let me introduce today's guests in Kabul, Wahid Omar, spokesperson for the Hamid Karzai election campaign. Also in Kabul, Wali Massoud, former Afghan ambassador to Britain and senior advisor to Abdullah Abdullah. And in London, Afghanistan expert and author Michael Griffin. Gentlemen, welcome to the programme. Uh, Wali, let me start with you. Uh, Dr Abdullah said he was withdrawing from the second round runoff uh, in the interests of the nation. But what he's done is caused more political upheaval. Was that his intention? Well, no, of course. As Dr. Abdullah said that he would uh, do it because of the high interests of the nation, because as we all know that unfortunately the last, the first round of the election was full of uh, fraud and riggings, uh, especially by Mr. Karzai's team, and there was no independent commission unfortunately, and we know that almost uh, one-fourth of the votes were rigged by Mr. Karzai's team. So therefore, uh, that's why it pushed the whole process into the second round. So Dr. Abdullah proposed all those amendments to be made, the conditions to be met before he goes to the second round. So in order to have a clear, clean, and free election. But, but, but all these fraud allegations have been investigated. Cynics would say that Dr. Abdullah withdrew because he knew that in a second round he would lose against Hamid Karzai. Well, I mean, that is not really accusation or allegation. That's been known by the Election Commission, uh, Election Complaint Commission, that more than a million of votes were wrecked by Mr. Karzai's team. So therefore, Dr. Abdullah has got every right to say that, well, these amendments have to be met before I go to the election. I cannot go to an election which I know that will be wrecked again. Uh, how can the commission fix everything within two weeks' time to go again for a, a just and uh, a free election. That was impossible. That's why Dr. Abdullah immediately proposed this thing. If Mr. Karzai wanted to really 
go for a free and fair election, he could have done some of those conditions, uh, which were very fair, to really pave the way for the election to take place. Unfortunately, Mr. Karzai, uh, he refused to do anything to uh, really have a free and fair election. Well, well let's that get a response to that from, to from Wahid. Uh, Wahid, these are uh, very serious concerns. Uh, why haven't those concerns been addressed? Uh, one thing is very important before I go into that is that uh, we had a process in place. Obviously, there were irregularities in the election, but the process worked well. And the result of the process, what happened, the outcome out of the process in the first round was acceptable to Dr. Abdullah. Though it was not acceptable to us, we had to respect that decision. So saying that the election, the first round of the election was rigged, that is why uh, Dr. Abdullah has decided not to go to a second round, has some problems because we believe that that process worked and a result that came out of that process was acceptable to everyone. So we, our understanding is that that process is still in place. We would have gone to the second round with Dr. Abdullah on board, and then we would have let the process work well, because what, it was acceptable first time for us. What you've got now is a situation where Hamid Karzai is the only candidate in a runoff. I mean, it can't even be called a runoff, can it? Doesn't that damage his credibility uh, when he's elected? I don't think so. Uh, we have already said that uh, we regret Dr. Abdullah's decision uh, uh, to pull out of elections in the very last days before the uh, runoff is scheduled. Uh, and uh, it leaves uh, us uh, and the uh, electoral authorities with no choice because we are constitutionally bound to go to a second round and that a second round has to be, uh, uh, has to be held so that we have a legitimate government in place. What we believe in is that there is a constitution, there is a process in place. Pulling out of the process because we foresee that something might happen was not a very good decision, but obviously we respect, while we do regret that decision, we respect it and we are all set to to go to a second round and uh, obviously it is the independent election commission and other legal authorities to come out and tell us how is the second round going to uh, uh, going to be held and uh, all we know is that we are constitutionally bound to go to a second round michael what do you think uh, this is going to throw up all kinds of questions about well, his like legitimacy say, in the interest in the interest of kind of trying to s restore some sense of balance to this conversation, can we, uh, can we establish for a start that one in three of President Karzai's uh, votes in the first round were deemed to be uh, fraudulent and rigged, and rigged with the assistance of the, uh, the Afghan uh, Electoral Commission and with a number of uh, officials who are working with the Karzai government in coordination with the electoral experiment the first time around. So it seems to me that uh, Mr. Mr. Karzai's spokesperson is deftly uh, avoiding this issue and, and trying to seek to blame uh, uh, Abdullah, Dr. Abdullah for having apparently botched the second round. Now he's apparently not going to go for a second round because he's seen the results of the first round. And his request for a kind of a more transparent uh, process in the electoral procedure in the second round has gone unanswered. And I, know, I understand that uh, a lot of uh, international organizations, and I think also the United States, are questioning the transparency uh, that the Katsai uh, commission is the Karzai appointed electoral commission is bringing to the second round they're opening more and more polling stations without uh, the recommendation of of the complaints commission which was the complaints commission if you recall was w was the uh, the authority which called into question and actually forced through the second round in the first place okay well of course the big question is whether Mr. Karzai is going to have any legitimacy if he returns for another term. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has indicated the second election will validate Hamid Karzai's position, even though he's unchallenged. She said, we see that happen in our own country, where for whatever combination of reasons, one of the candidates decides not to go forward. I don't think it has anything to do with the legitimacy of the election. It's a personal choice which may or may not be made. Uh, Michael, what do you make of uh, that take on it from uh, the no, West. It's, very it's a very interesting take because obviously the United States has a, a, a real important role to play in this election. Uh, this election will determine whether President Obama actually does decide to reinforce the American um, contingent in Afghanistan by 40,000, whether he thinks that uh, it's worth putting, as we say, uh, throwing good money after bad 
to support a government like Mr. Karzai's government, which has plainly attempted to steal this election the first time around. Will they allow him to steal it the second time around? And will they then throw in another 40,000 troops at a, at a million dollars a, a soldier per annum? I think, I, I think we're getting to a very crucial deter, uh, deciding point in, in Afghanistan. Uh, and, and, and this decision by uh, Dr. Abdullah is really pushing it at the moment to... to, to it's high, st it's high stakes poker. Absolutely. Uh, Wally, what about uh, simply postponing the election? Would Dr. Abdullah take place, uh, take part in an election if his concerns were addressed and if it was postponed till spring? Doesn't everyone want to see it in spring anyway? Well, let me say first uh, what Mr. Omar said about uh, constitutionally bound. In our constitution, it says that the two candidates which gets the highest percentage of the vote, they will go uh, for the second round. So therefore, two of them, they have, they, they have to go to the second round. If one of them withdraw or say that I cannot participate, the single candidate cannot go. That's not constitutional, that a single candidate can go without any challenger. Do you, for do you the agree with election. that, Wahid? That's not in our it's constitution. It's unconstitutional. I, 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 no, actually, I, let me go back a little bit to what Michael had to say. I think that that analysis was very well informed because there is no data released by the Electoral Complaints Commission saying that one out of three of the uh, President Karzai votes were wrecked. That is basically uh, coming from Michael. Uh, uh, no, no, but, the, the uh, UN-led uh, investigation whatever, threw what, out nearly a million votes because they were based yes, on fraud. Yes, but that was, but, but, but some of that, some of that would belong to, uh, obviously belong to President Karzai, some of that belong to uh, Dr. Abdullah, some of that belong to Dr. Bashar Dost, and some of that belong to other candidates. There right. is no real percentage issued. And so far as uh, the uh, constitutionally bound issue is concerned, yes, both ca candidates are constitutionally bound to go to a second round, and a second round, so, the decision to withdraw four days before the elections, I think that is not constitutional. But as a candidate, what we know out of law is that by law, we are bound to go to a second round. Whether or not somebody else decides to go to these elections or withdraws, that does not lift our constitutional obligation. Hmm, okay, well, uh, this is let, what uh, let, independent lawmaker Dawood let, Sultan Zoy uh, says. He was formerly in Karzai's cabinet. He says uh, this current situation is uncharted territory. He said he, meaning Karzai, can do whatever he wants, but it will be disputed in the court of law and nationally and internationally. Uh, Michael, it, it seems uh, unlikely that whatever happens on November the 7th, um, that this outcome is not going to be disputed and perhaps legally. Well, I, it's, it's a very difficult one because, because um, the Supreme Court I in Afghanistan, if, if this indeed would be the, the final court of appeal in an issue like this, is in, in Karzai's control. It's controlled by one of his allies. The uh, Electoral Commission is controlled by his appointees. The only, the, only, so, uh, the only impartial and neutral observer is the Electoral Complaints Commission. The Electoral Complaints Commission is largely composed of internationals. They have a three to, three to two majority of the Afghan uh, contingent. So, of course, we then get into this horrible, uh, horribly political territory of uh, our, in, our international people dictating the future of Afghanistan and our international organizations saying whether Karzai is going to be the president or not the president. Well, I, hate, um, uh, well, I, hate, very, I can see you shaking your head there at what poker. Michael's saying. What, what do you think about the, the legal position? I think this is a very pessimistic uh, analysis of uh, saying that the Supreme, Supreme Court belongs to President Karzai and the Electoral Commission as well. These are our legal constitutional institutions here. We cannot go to uh, uh, we cannot go to Den Haag for this. Obviously, this is the constitutional framework here, and these are the constitutional but this is bodies an which will have to decide situation, this. situation, isn't it? I mean, does Afghan law or the Constitution it even is. say anything about this? Uh, Absolutely. What we know is that we were bound to go to the elections. Somebody has chosen to withdraw from the elections and the legal authorities here. I have been hearing this. Uh, you, say, you saw the unanimous press release today kind of confirming that the second round has to happen and this does not have to do anything with a second round. You mentioned Hillary Clinton talking about it. I heard, uh, we consulted a lot of lawmakers and a lot of uh, law experts here. They were on TV saying that constitutionally we need to go to a second round 
somebody's personal choice to withdraw should not alter the process and the process should go ahead. So that is what we know based well, on what people, our constitutional experts say here. There is no provision in the Constitution for a postponement, and we don't see if uh, Dr. Abdullah has withdrawn and President Hamid Karzai is the only contender, we don't see how is a postponement going to help the selections. Wally, if this run, uh, runoff goes ahead uh, next weekend, what are Dr. Abdullah's supporters going to do? How will they react, do you think? Well, let me just first say that about the... Uh, percentage of the uh, fraud uh, based on the election election complaint commission 76% uh, of the fraud belongs to Mr. Hamid Karzai and 14 and half percent belongs to Dr. Abdullah and that's a big big gap and not don't forget that this was the government who is responsible to take care of the fraud to really control to maintain security and uh, that was the government uh, appointed election commission was responsible for all of that one. So therefore, the government as well as the election commission, both of them, they are responsible for the fraud. Whoever has done that one, but that's that's the reality. This one thing. The second thing, what what Ms. Clinton said, I'm sure that. Ms. Clinton is not familiar with the Constitution of Afghanistan. And in the Constitution, it doesn't say, it doesn't say that if there is one candidate, he can go it alone. That doesn't say. Well, the court you are talking about, unfortunately, that uh, 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 Mr. Azimi, um, uh, who was, who we, uh, if we bring, uh, take the, the case for him, he is one of the allies of Mr. Karzai. Of course, uh, he was the one who really gave the first uh, extension of Mr. Karzai to be the president. Although we know that for the past few months, Mr. Karzai is not a legitimate president. Well, well Wally, he extended uh, uh, just his further term. to that, was there pressure on uh, Dr. Abdullah not to pull out? Do you think there was pressure from the West for him to continue with the process? Well, of course, uh, there was uh, some of them, they were saying that uh, he should continue with the process, and Dr. Abdullah uh, said to them that, well, uh, if there are some amendments uh, in the uh, election process and the election commission, what he proposed, of course, uh, he, would, he was committed to go, but unfortunately not a single amendment took place. So therefore, uh, what happened in the past, again, that will be the same result in the future. And that's why Dr. Abdullah refused to participate. Michael, where does this leave the West? Because it looks like they're now going to be stuck with Hamid Karzai, who is widely regarded as being the head of a, a corrupt government and uh, there are going to be questions about the legitimacy of his election. What does this mean for President Obama's strategy for Afghanistan? Uh, I think things are moving very, very rapidly in Afghanistan and we shouldn't underestimate the speed and the potential violence inherent in this situation. Last week I would have said after the, um, the Taliban uh, successfully killed uh, a number of UN election-related uh, workers in a guest house in Kabul that, in fact, the Taliban controlled the outcome of this election. Now, I would say Dr. Abdullah does, to, to this extent, is that Dr. Abdullah has, because he had such a, a generous proportion of the vote, even without the cheating, so let's say 32 percent of, of the turnout voted for Abdullah, and to a large extent he's being perceived as the reformist candidate, the person who can clean up the corruption of which you speak that's associated with, with President Karzai and his war collection of warlords. Now, an awful lot of things which should have been done in Afghanistan over the past eight years have not been done because of this very association between President Karzai and his warlords. Wahid, how, how do you answer are, the, those, uh, those comments? Well, these are, these are uh, I think, very biased comments. Uh, 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 I, well, Michael has the right to say what his, uh, uh, right to express his opinion. But what happens here is that, uh, uh, well, uh, Dr. Abdullah did get 27% of the vote. And after whatever happened in the Electoral Complaints Commission, uh, President Karzai got 49% of the vote. So if that is not mentioned, and Dr. Abdullah is uh, seen as a perceived, a, in, in Michael's perception, as a reformist, I think that uh, Dr. Abdullah has been part of our government uh, for the most part of it. He was our Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. But, but I do you think not, we know do Dr. Not Abdullah much more than uh, Michael, Michael Afghan does. people feel let down 
down by what's happened, feel let down by the huge amount of fraud, by uh, the, the, the huge security problems, by the increasing violence from the Taliban. How do you think ordinary Afghans are viewing this? Yes, ordinary Afghans know there are a lot of problems. Ordinary Afghans were let down by what happened in the elections, but they were left up by uh, by the process. The process worked. There was a complaints uh, procedure. It addressed all the process. We would have had a reason to worry about the elections if we had a process that failed, but that process didn't fail. That process succeeded, and that process resulted in the second round. We hope that that process will succeed again, but making perceptions and making uh, uh, a mindset that the process doesn't work so someone withdraws because he believes this process is not going to work I think that was a bit ahead of time that was a, a, a wrong prejudgment about the elections and we believe uh, we should have let the process uh, go on and uh, work its way out Wally has uh, Dr. Abdullah betrayed his supporters should he have let the process go on well what Dr. Abdullah has said that he would not participate he has not said to his supporters what to do, but he said that he does not believe if it's uh, the right uh, commission, if uh, his uh, uh, proposal are being responded positively, and there is no amendment. So therefore, he said that he does not participate, uh, but he did not say to his followers what to do. Is he of still course, envisaging some kind of unity government, perhaps, in the future? Well, first, of course, what we are really kind of, what we have concentrated on was that election uh, to get the process uh, right. Unfortunately, Mr. Karzai's team and the election commission, they really stopped the process by uh, forcing some sort of uh, irregularities and fraud and all of that. So therefore, that process in Afghanistan at the moment have been defamed by Mr. Karzai's team and by that election commission. Therefore, what we are still concentrating on that we should go and eventually, at the end of the day, we have to have an election in Afghanistan. This is the only way in Afghanistan forward. But, of course, uh, we need a, a good mechanism in order to go for that one. About the unity government, of course, that is a future talk. And I cannot comment right now at this moment. But what we are concentrating on, that, let's see what exactly uh, is uh, what happen in days coming. Uh, Wahid, a, a lot will depend on how the elections are perceived and what happens at the second round voting uh, on, uh, on November the 7th. Uh, a lot is riding on this. Yes, it is. Uh, it is obviously a, a, a great turning point in, in the history, in our current history. Uh, I once again repeat that uh, Dr. Abdullah was a serious contender in these elections. His decision to withdraw has damaged the process, but it does not delegitimize the process. That is what everybody is saying. And uh, we. Well, it's a, it's this a fair is not point, the best isn't it? Uh, there's not going the to best... be a lot of choice on November the 7th. The best scenario would have been that the two contenders go to the elections and people would have chosen between them. But a decision to withdraw from the elections, that is a personal right that Dr. Abdullah reserves. But there is another right given to the people of Afghanistan by the Constitution to vote for their president. And that right cannot be taken from the people by the decision that has been made by one of the candidates. Michael, Even if it was Hamid Karzai, seconds, the process Michael, should still have gone. Is there a way forward for Afghanistan? Um, what I would anticipate over the coming week is that after maybe 24 hours, uh, Dr. Abdullah will set out a series of demands in the form of a manifesto for reform by this government. Then the election will go ahead with or without Mr. Abdullah's participation and, and President Karzai will be endorsed but very, very very, very unenthusiastically endorsed and will be regarded uh, as, uh, as, uh, as a, a necessary evil perhaps. Well, we wait to see what happens as events unfold. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for taking part in this discussion. Wahid Omar, uh, Wali Masood and Michael Griffin. And that's it for this edition of Inside Story. Thanks for joining us. Do let us know your thoughts. Email us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. But for now, from me, Shuli Ghosh, bye-bye.